So, um, and do you want me to move on to the next slide to show the word cloud and the questions? Um, yes. And then we'll, if we could go back to this so I can just talk about the, the meeting topics. That yep. Would be yep. We can show. So, so this, this is just a yeah. highlight of the, of what people had said and some of the keywords that really popped out a lot as you answered those questions. And quality was the biggest one, one of the biggest ones. And that was the second question. So here we go. All right. Um, so I wanted to talk um, about what the meeting topics will be for the four stakeholder convenings. So today is meeting number one. We're talking about housekeeping, history, and just kind of level setting where we're at, what is the path forward, and hearing from you all about what we just went through an exercise about what you'd really like to keep and what you would like to get rid of. Um, in meeting number two, we are going to actually dig in to proposed new criteria for levels two, three, and four. And then in, and also I just wanna say at that meeting, we're really gonna be looking at the criteria and having conversations about what we intend for a guidance manual, what these things may look like in your program. And we would like you to bring your thoughts on um, what you think implementation would look like and where you see there could be challenges there, where you could see that there's strengths in that. So um, we will be getting out some materials prior to that meeting for you all to take a look at and we'll make sure to give you some time to do that. Um, Ellen, you have a question? Yes. Um, are the criteria that you're going to be showing for the new the new criteria for each level, is that the what has come out of the work groups that started in 2019? A lot of it, yes. And OK, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, we've definitely been wordsmithing with um, federal TA, but we've been absolutely working on that foundation. Um, Meeting number three is going to be the level five criteria, and we'll get into why this is a separate meeting in a little bit. Um, and then meeting number four, we're going to be talking about the application, um, funding options, support system, and documentation. So we'll probably dive a little bit more into the coaching component here. I see another hand up, but I don't know whose it is. Oh. Ellen, do you have another question? Is your hand still up? Sorry about that. Oh, no know. worries, no worries. Um, okay, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over. Um, and Amy and Joanna are gonna walk us through some of the history of STARS Evolution. Um, they probably know it better than a lot of us, though I know a lot of you have been through a lot of the STARS evolution, so. Yeah, th thank you. Um, yeah, I recognize a lot of you from various parts of the work that has led up to today. Um, so we don't want to spend a lot of time on the history of that work to um, redesign and revise STARS, but what we did want to do was to give you some kind of grounding in that history. Some of you are pretty brand new to it, um, and we thought that might be helpful as a, a starting point for the discussion today. Um, I will say overall, and I know um, some of you have been here for the, the entire time, um, this work has been ongoing for a very long time, um, but it should be noted too that STARS was one of the very first QRIS in the nation. And as was mentioned before, I think by Miranda, 
it has been a system that other states have looked to. So there's some we have a lot to be proud of here in Vermont. Um, we there was a, a revision that took place and we'll talk a little bit more about that. That was in 2010. Um, and Joanna, I think that's right around the time you started. And then, mm -hmm. um, yeah, phase one of the revision that we're in now has been in place since 2019. And, and that was really in direct response to stakeholder feedback. Um, we are very committed, as you can see, to that stakeholder feedback. We found it tremendously helpful at that point. So I guess the best way to say it is the focus for these meetings is for us to look forward together. And um, we really appreciate the help that you're going to give to CDD to help us create a revised QRS that's that's going to work for you. Um, I guess as opposed to you know looking back and talking about issues of the current system, we're, we're going to look forward. OK, Joanna, I think you are. <laughs> OK, so uh, so in 2002, uh, Learning Partners was contracted by the Child Development Division to develop and implement the STARS system. In November 2003, the STARS system was rolled out in the Northeast Kingdom with three home providers receiving the first STARS certificates. In 2007, the first attempt at uh, gathering stakeholder feedback with a view to improving the system um, in 2007 that happened and STARS participants were surveyed. In 2010, the first revision to the system uh, um, went into effect and there were the main changes were in the professional development requirements and how the points were um, calculated. And at that point, the application went from being an annual application to a three year application. And at that time, the STARS administration also shifted to Mary Johnson Children's Center. And again, in January 2011, STARS participants were surveyed again to receive feedback about how the um, transition had gone from Learning Partners Administration to um, Mary Johnson Administration of the STARS system, um, mainly. Um, and then we started, and then at that point, some serious um, thinking began about uh, making changes and revisions to the system to improve it again. In March 2011, Donna Bryant from um, Frank Porter Graham Institute visited the Oversight Committee and Child Development Division um, to discuss how we could use our internal data to evaluate the STAR system. In September 2012, the, a Vermont team attended a Region 1 QRIS conference and um, had a private meeting with Kelly Maxwell of the Frank Porter Graham Institute as well um, to further explore using data um, that, we're, that we were currently collecting to evaluate our system and um, think, begin to think about what types of revisions we wanted to make. So this work has been going on for a long time. Um, in April 2013, there was an evaluation committee formed with community partners, um, Vermont After School, at that time it was Vermont Birth to Three, uh, Building Bright Futures, Agency of Education and CDD folks. Um, at that group um, explored how we could use our internal data and STARS administrative data for an evaluation. Um, and the collective work of the group um, was used to create a 10 year summative report, which if anybody wants, you can you can contact me. I can send you a copy. Um, and uh, once that report was presented, the committee met a few more times and then decided to disband um, to make way for the forming of a new committee and a, that would be working on an evaluation and validation study um, using an outside contractor and um, funded by Race to the Top Early Learning Early Learning Challenge Grant monies. Um, let's see. So uh, then in in um, December of 2014, an RFP went out for the evaluation and validation study, 
And in May of 2015, uh, Child Trans, which is an organization that provides services nationally to um, states and other entities for um, uh, studies and support for QRIS, among many other things related to child early childhood programs and services. Um, they were contracted for the evaluation and validation of the STARS system. In January of 2016, they completed the indicator analysis, which means they, they and analyzed the current criteria for their effectiveness um, with regard to child outcomes and presented that to the Child Development Division and the Oversight Committee, and they, as well as analyzing our current system of points um, and comparing it to that of other states. Uh, in, uh, in June, they completed the evaluation of STARS and began the validation uh, study in which um, pro uh, program assessments were done in a variety of programs around the state who volunteered to participate um, and that that data was used to determine if the STARS criteria were valid in terms of, um, uh, and if, if the STAR levels were valid in terms of actual measures of quality. Um, they also conducted a virtual pilot using the current criteria and determining if we put them into a block system, what would happen to the programs currently in STARS, would they be able to maintain their STAR levels and we discovered that, that that would not be the case. Um, and so we began a new look at what type of criteria we would want for STARS. In August, um, the work groups were formed again to redefine the criteria for STARS, and the committee was named the Evaluation, Validation, and Revision Work Group, <laughs> which is a mouthful, um, and it gradually and eventually became known as the Evolution Committee. Um, the evolution committee worked on phase one changes and um, which everybody I think is now familiar with um, and also began discussing what the criteria would be for for phase two. In November of 2018, the phase one rollout was discussed and planned. And then um, in January 2019, the Evolution Committee continued work and developing the individual criteria for phase two. And February, let's see, I'm going to skip ahead. September 2019, phase one changes were implemented. The regulatory history arena was discontinued. All programs um, received a star level. Um, and with star the first with the first star being in regulatory compliance um, in good standing and the specialized care provider agreement criteria in the families and community arena was ceased um, and as amy mentioned those changes were in direct um, response to stakeholder feedback and um, be mainly because they were considered barriers for programs for pre-K qualification, for being a specialized care provider, and for advancing in the stars, in the uh, advancing star levels. Um, and Amy, I think at this point, when we're talking about what happened in 22, that, that I'll pass that off, 20, 2019, excuse me, um, pass that off to you <laughs> to take it from here. Sounds good. Yeah, so the only thing I would add about um, 2019 is that um, that was a time that many of you may remember that some folks from Child Development Division went on tour across Vermont to present mm -hmm. proposed revisions to the STARS structure and criteria. And the goal there was, um, as we're doing now, to get reactions and feedback from the field as well as other stakeholders. Um, I remember we received hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of comments, and um, it was the task for the Evolution Committee and CDD to kind of work together hard all that summer of 2019 
to use that feedback to make changes to the draft. Um, and then as Joanna mentioned in September um, of 2019, phase one started and she described that. Um, let's see. Um, also, uh, toward the end of 2019, the CDD Child Development Division convenes a number of work groups to develop supporting information for the next phase of the STARS evolution. So we got that work going and then um, it was concurrent with the work of the STARS Evolution Committee who were wrapping up their work. They, um, the work groups worked through March of 2020 um, and what ended that work was, you all know, the COVID emergency shutdown. Um, let's see. So then in 2020, SARS Oversight finished a draft of a five star points menu. And the idea about, behind that um, was that that would be presented to the Child Development Division for consideration. It was mentioned when um, the Child Development Division folks went out on tour. Um, so in other words, those five star criteria had not been developed at the time of the tour and were not revealed. And in fact, because of COVID really, um, the this points menu that we had developed was never in fact vetted by the CDD. Um, but I will say that um, the STARS revision group that's working to present um, you know, some slightly changed, I mean, very, very similar, but 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 slightly changed um, criteria to you in meetings coming up with this group. We will take a look at that. Um, that list is kind of foundational information that will help us build the, the STARS level five criteria. Um, the substantive work on STARS continued on hold in 2021 um, with, with one thing that was kind of important. Um, there was some uh, research that was highlighted at there's a group called the Build Initiative, and um, they hold a conference every year, and it's all about QRIS. And in that conference, which was virtual, there was some research that was presented that was um, really interesting and has a lot of bearing on where we're going today. Um, let's see. And then in late 2021, um, we decided to kind of reboot the work, get going again, late 2021, and that's the work that continues today. And we're building on the foundation of all of the work that was done prior. Um, so that brings us really to this year. And um, wanted to let you know that STARS, the administration of the STARS system, which as Joanna noted, has been with Mary Johnson Children's Center for many years, will conclude on June 30th this year. So in just a little over a month, bringing us into a transition year where um, STARS will be administered from within the Child Development Division. And I think that's what I got for history. Does anyone have, do we have time for questions? Leslie, we can do a few minutes for questions. Yeah. Do folks have questions? Any clar clarifications or questions? I'm guessing they're probably ready, or I would be if I was in this group. Show us the slide with where you're going to. <laughs> <laughs> right. OK, Nicole. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> So we're going to walk through very quickly and Joanna, I know you know this like better than anybody, so jump in. Um, just brief overview. Here's where we are now. I think this is what everyone is familiar with is that we are working right now in four arenas and you all have um, different uh, verifications, different things that you um, submit with your application in order to achieve points in each arena, right? And then um, 
once you have your point total, you end up um, with the star level you're at. I know that that's like the most simplified version ever. I just want to make sure we have time for the rest of the blocks. But Joanna, do you have parts and pieces that you'd like to add to this? I, I think you um, I think that's the basics of it. So okay. no, I think we could go ahead. OK. Um, any questions on this so far? And also, we are recording this, um, so you will be able to refer back to this presentation. And if anyone wants just a copy of the PowerPoint, we can give that to you too. But this is what Mary Johnson Children's Center currently has as kind of like the overview of how um, points are determined. Are you good with this? All right, next slide. Oh, Ellen, do you have a question? Yes. Um, for the how can you talk about can the regulatory compliance this? thing? Because I actually didn't see that on my application. Leslie, can you go back to the previous slide? Talk about um, yeah. like how like where those so is it like where so, those tiers come in? Um, and yeah, and all that all of that. And I also want to say that it seems to me also like licensing now hangs around until they give a violation. So that seems also um, uh, I don't, counter intuitive or antithetical to, to actually supporting programs if they're hanging around until they find something to give a violation for. Uh, okay, so Nicole, do, you want me to, do you want me to answer that? Not about the licensing, but so, Yes, go ahead. <laughs> so, re so, so one star means a program has a license in good standing right now. Um, and we don't look at the violations and programs aren't awarded points or not based on that as they had been in the past. Now it's just if the program if you know we look in bright futures and the program has a full license and the light and there is no um and the license is good in good standing in other words it's not a provisional license and they're not there's not a um uh intent to revoke or suspend um noted there then the program gets a uh, one star and there are programs that choose not to get any higher and have have one star um, and then for the, all the other star levels regulatory compliance is is um, not considered other than the fact that their license is in good standing thank you for clarifying that um, and i don't know if you're confused by tier one two three four but those are the star levels it is yeah they're star actually level not one star level two um yeah and if if you know if there's anything that you have feelings about with your licensor i'm happy to talk about that offline too oh no that's fine i actually don't have any um violations which i'm very lucky um to be around for 14 years and have no violations but that alone was a conversation with the licensor she actually said well now it's it's time you had one <laughs> mm -hmm. and i said no, i don't think so but anyways I think just on this particular slide that the one to four, five to eight, nine to 11, that's actually not associated with the regulatory compliance. I think I was just reading it, um, just confused by the way the slide was. Right, and you know, violations wouldn't necessarily like put your license in non-compliance, so. Uh, right, and that's a, that's a great change to STARS because it didn't used to be that way. Any other questions, comments on the current structure? And then we can dive into the block system. Um, we sure really just wanted to, oh, go ahead. Oops, sorry. I'm not sure if this is where to ask this question, but I did have a director that was um, concerned and wondering where the current STARS people, workers are gonna be going to, if they're gonna not have jobs anymore, or if they're going to be transitioning to some other, she was just concerned about them. <laughs> So the agreement with Mary Johnson Children's Center will be ending at the end of June. And um, some of the people that are working there now will be in other jobs. Some of them are moving into positions with the Child Development Division. 
So there's uh, like Joanna will be coming to the trial development division um, as well as one of the current assessors. So that's where that's at right now. Right, so we really wanted to highlight this slide to just show you the point system versus um, where we are going. So, and this should look familiar to some folks who had worked in STARS Evolution or had been part of the think tank, right? Is moving from a high stakes point system to a block system. We're not getting into the nitty gritty of the criteria, but we have tried to succinctly describe what's in each block. And so what the shift will mean is that instead of earning points in different arenas, there will be um, specific expectations in each level around program policy um, and implementation of those policies. And that will also include a continuous quality improvement plan starting at star level two that programs will work on. And we will also be introducing a coaching component, meaning that we will have regional coach coaches available to assist with programs who need help with how to implement things in that program, help with their CQI plan. Um, and that's in addition to assessors. We look at those as kind of two different roles in the system that we're building. I see a hand up from Michelle. Um, you have a question? Um, do you want, I can remember, I just put my hand up so I didn't forget to ask. If you want to get through all the five blocks first. <laughs> sure. And we are going to go through, we have a slide for each one of these to kind of go through. And I will also just remind you and assure you that in future meetings, we are diving into the nitty gritty of what all the criteria will be and looking for feedback on if we need to be altering some of it. So one star programs have a solid foundation focused on a safe and healthy environment for children to learn and grow measured by compliance and good standing with licensing. This means nothing is changing here. So star level one is that you are in good standing with licensing. Um, star level two, we're looking for the programs to implement additional program practices known to have positive impacts on child outcomes. Um, and this is where you'd begin to build your CQI plan. And I also want to try to ease some minds here in that I know you're not seeing all the criteria tonight, but that the criteria that we're looking at should be very familiar to what was talked about in SARS evolution. And it should also not be anything that is new for programs in Vermont or where if you are a, a three star, three star, four star, five star program, I don't think that you should be concerned that the new criteria are going to make you like drop in star level. So I just want to put that out there because I feel like that feedback that we've gotten that people are concerned about. Um, we're just looking at assessing differently with less administrative burden and modernizing. Um, star level three programs intentionally promote children's learning and development through observation and child assessment. We're also bringing in um, some assessment self assessment tools. Um, I know those already exist, but we are kind of looking at updated versions and alternative versions um, with federal TA right now. Um, four stars programs support a quality learning environment with curriculum implementation and social and emotional interactions. And then five star program CQI plan includes data from an improved menu of assessment tools. So this is really basic. We're going to kind of go through in a little bit further detail. This is where we're going and I don't know Michelle is this a good time for your question before we go into each individual level and then I will leave question time for questions at the end. I'm hoping because we only have to go through these start levels left and then I wanted open dialogue. I, my question is, um, you talked about how this is the piece that was done prior to COVID. I was part of the stakeholder committee, and mm -hmm. there are a couple pieces that within the staff qualifications mm -hmm. that they were looking to increase. 
but is there going to be any reflection with staff qualifications with the change made by child care licensing um, where they've lowered head teacher qualifications back to the previous, I think it was 2016, due to the issues of qualified staffing. So we don't have programs that have lead teachers that can fill the role. But now with STARS, you know, really stretching and encouraging higher standards that they're not going to be able to meet that. So I think the question is, how heavily weighted is the new STAR system with teacher qualifications? Is that essentially? Right, and is it going to reflect the changes with child care licensing, the like lowering their standards again, because they were, they did increase it to um, more higher education, mm -hmm. um, but now it's not as aggressive. Yeah, so I think there, there are two separate things, right? Is that we're saying that the one star level is regulatory compliance and we go up with quality from there. There's not going to be, and this has been a huge goal in us starting this work, we're going to try to prevent as much as possible redundancy with licensing where we're looking at um, something in stars that licensing is already looking at. So there are some elevated pieces in the higher levels and we are going to be doing some crosswalks with different accreditations if that makes sense um but there is a consciousness that it will be hard for programs if it is a, a solid requirement in the non-menu menued levels to increase um, individual staff qualifications like exponentially, but we will get into that and you will all get to give feedback on um, where we're at and if that looks reasonable for programs in Vermont. So. Nicole, can I just add one thing there, Michelle, um, just so you know, the the draft uh, to my knowledge, the draft regulations have not gone into promulgation yet. So I don't think we're at a place where we know exactly what the final wording will be. So I would just encourage you to kind of keep an eye out. I don't think we're at a place where we know for sure what the changes to staff qualifications will actually look like. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah, and we do have. Um, finishing the regulation revision work groups, we do have suggestions and we have collected mm -hmm. feedback, but just like Becky said, we haven't started the formal pro promulgation, which also will have an additional public comment period. So I will uh, make sure that everyone's up to date on that and it'll definitely go out through our listserv as well. All right. Ready? This is just a different visual to show you um, that really nothing's changing in the one star level. We're showing you the different language that's being used, um, but really in good regulatory standing with state licensing regulations is where we're at with star level one. <clears throat> Two stars, so currently that's one to four points. Um, and you'll see that these are some language changes, but we're not having huge shifts in the level of quality at the levels, right? It's just different language moving towards different assessment. Um, so right now are making commitment to strengthen their practices. They may have made some progress in many, um, I think that's supposed to be arenas or more progress in one or two areas. But I think, <laughs> I'm gonna guess that we had some, um, some autocorrect with areas and arenas in this presentation, just gonna say that. Um, and then we're moving to meeting all criteria for level one, which we know is good uh, regulatory compliance and good standing with licensing and establishes policies and program practices with a focus on quality measures for child outcomes and begins to implement a continuous quality improvement plan. Any questions on star level two? I think we should maybe take questions as we go um, if that's helpful. And if not, we can move forward. Okay, level three. Oh, Becky. Hi, um, again, I said in the beginning that I'm opening a program in the fall mm -hmm. and I'm curious with this um, new way. Mm -hmm. Right now I can open with three stars. Would mm -hmm. this still count because it says begins to implement continuous quality improvement plan? And that seems like it's something that needs to be done while you're 
while you have students and the programs <laughs> running. So two things to note here. Um, one is that we will still be maintaining the three years for applications, so it's going to be a. Um, a tiered rollout, I guess I'm losing the word that I want to look at here, but if you've already had um, your stars application and assessment done, you would probably roll into the new system later than some. Also, continuous quality improvement plans. You may be able to come in as, you know, a veteran provider or someone who has run another program and show us that you are beyond beginning to implement your continuous quality improvement plan that you already have one. You may need to format some things, um, but you can still come in and start at a higher star level. You don't have to start at star level one. It will be the same. Can we, are we ready for level three? Okay. So currently five to eight points um, have made improvements and are working to reach specific goals. They have made either, um, they have either made substantial progress in two or three areas or have made some improvements across all four arenas. Sorry, I need to say arenas. Um, Block level three programs, so we're just shifting over to what it'll look like in the new system, which is that you're meeting all the criteria for levels one and two. You're continuing to develop policies and program practices and begins to incorporate self-assessment data from approved tools and reviews and revises continuous quality improvement plan. So this might um, speak a little bit to the last question we had that you may um, be learning self-assessment tools you may be already have some experience with those we're not fully changing we are going to go through a revision year where we're going to look at exactly what that rollout is between the old system and the new system too so um, this is star level three now and future trying to give the classic 10 seconds for questions, but I'm terrible at silence. <laughs> All right, let's go to level four. OK, four stars. So nine to 11 points are established programs that have met several standards of quality in all four arenas. Many four star programs are also nationally accredited. So this is what I talked about earlier that we are going to do those crosswalks with the accreditations that we already consider when we're doing stars right now. Um, and then we'd be moving to meeting all the criteria from level one, two, and three, and elevates policies and program practices, incorporating valid and reliable data from approved assessments, and implements a responsive curriculum, and reviews and revises continuous quality improvement plan. All right. Five stars. Nicole, can I ask before you move to five? Is um in the case here or the valid and reliable data from approved assessments, is this where the things like Eckers, Itters, class, whichever the actual tools are, but is this where that would come into the puzzle? Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, thank you. Yes. And with the component of the coaches, we're hoping that should programs want um guidance and technical assistance on these tools that we will have assessors and coaches to be able to help with that um, and teach and learn self-assessment in advance. So we're really hoping that that'll be a helpful component because we have heard a lot of feedback that that's a gap. All right. Any other questions on four stars? Okay. Five stars, 12 to 14 points right now outstanding in all four arenas. Many five star programs are also nationally accredited. So um, in the new five star level, we're going to be meeting all of the criteria in the blocks one through four. Elevates policies and implements program practices based on a menu of quality indicators and assessments. So this is the menu that Amy mentioned in her presentation that was started in STARS Evolution but hadn't been fully vetted. So we used that, um, I guess, 
the way that I have heard about it was that that was kind of like a big brainstorm of all the things that folks had felt in that last group that um, could possibly be things at the five star level. So we've used that and we've also been working with um, federal TA on suggestions of things that could be in that menu as well. Um, and this would also um, review and revise CQI plan um, incorporating data from list of state approved assessments. So um, really we're building on each block up and then at five stars, that's where you get um, the choice for a menu of additional quality indicators and assessments that you can bring into your program. Um, questions here. And I'm also interested to know from people who were in um, previous groups and worked on this, if this was what you expected from that, or if this is way off, or I, I'm really interested. <laughs> one question related to what you just said, Nicole. So yeah. would the five-star level be a block or point system, looking at it from like the way that other QRS, QRISs are, are designed? Oops. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Something? That's totally fine. So um, typically what I know of QRIS design, there's the block system point system and then like a blended system of which our old one was not quite in any of those categories. But mm -hmm. would this, the idea of the five star, would that be more of the points lens or would that be more the block lens? Um, so we haven't assigned points yet. And so I don't know, and we're going to work through that in this group, right? Yep. I don't know if there are going to be points assigned or if there's going to be a number from the menu that we're going to look at. We're still working with federal TA and suge suggestions for that, right. but I think ultimately we're going to end up in a blended system. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts, reflections? But I know I just gave that prompt because I'm really interested. I am, uh, I've been with the division for about a year now. And I have been working with a lot of people with historical knowledge and working through a lot of um, the notes and materials that came from those previous groups. So I'm really intrigued from people that have been through if you feel like we are following suit to what phase two was slated to do. Go ahead, Kelly. So my question is in regards to for the Head Start for um, programs for our monitoring reviews. Um, will that will those reviews still count in the new star system? Like as part of um, you like if we we just submit our review and that that counted in the arena um, of that we've had a program um, like assessment. So nothing will change in the current STARS system now. This is what we are proposing to start moving forward, and then we will go into promulgation. So no one needs to worry about for your current program and how you're being assessed right now about this new criteria. No, I'm wondering, is it in, is it, because I don't see it in the language here, is it in the new criteria? that you'll I think, have. I think, Nicole, I think yeah. it would be part of the crosswalk. The crosswalk. Like, about. Yes, like our monitoring protocols. Kelly, you're talking about your NAEYC. Um, no, I'm not talking about our NAEC. I'm talking about when, um, like if you have a federal monitoring review oh, um, in the Office of Head Start. Can I jump in? Yes. <laughs> Uh, so okay. what Kelly's Sorry. asking is right now, Head Start licensed programs automatically receive five stars because we crosswalked the Head Start standards with the STAR standards and found that they actually went above and beyond the STAR standards. And so right now, I think your question, Kelly, is in the new system, 
is right. there going to be a crosswalk with the Head Start standards and a, and a star level assigned or something like yes. that? I think that's what your question is. Am I right? It is. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. I mean, it is. It just it it refers to and like when we you know our our paperwork or whether it, it refers to you have to submit your federal monitoring review, which mm -hmm. states did you meet all of the standards? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. So the answer is yes, and okay. I think that's what Leslie was trying to tell me in in my yes. language, which is yes, we will be doing the crosswalk. Um, we have not done it yet, but I don't think things like that are going to change. Okay. All right, thank you. So I'll I'll make a comment about um, I I I would say that um, this basically seems from my memory of what what we had worked on in the work groups that this is really pretty close to what we um, you know what was decided and then when we you know next next meeting when we look at the criteria um, that's when it'll um, probably get really interesting <laughs> but um, um, yeah this this what you presented here, Nicole, seems to me very consistent with what um, we worked on in the work group. That is what I would like to hear. OK, um, so this is what we have to share tonight. We really wanted to level set and let you know the path that we're going forward. I did want to leave some room for questions. I know we've been taking them along the way, so. I think at this point, um, I want to give you some of your evening back if you would like it. If you would like to stay and have open dialogue or have questions, you are welcome to do so and the CDD team will stay on. Um, does that work for everyone? Nicole, were mm -hmm. we going to talk about the next meetings or? or yeah. I, I went through that a little bit in the beginning, but the next meeting I did talk about, we will be diving into the criteria for levels two, three, and four. I was thinking more about like dates and that sort of thing, just to kind of clarify for anybody. Um, yeah, Leslie, do we have a date for the next meeting? Or that's that's a good point, Amy, sorry. Yeah. Right. So then the next meeting we were looking at um, June 15th um, because I think a lot of our people are unavailable the following week. So I think that's kind of what we landed on for that one. Um, and I think we can, if this start time worked for everyone, I think that we can leave it here. We could push it back a little. Um, I did want to sort of talk about that if the start time was working for everybody um, or if that was too quick for people to make the transition. Um, you can l let us know in the chat or um, unmute and let us know if you have any thoughts on that or we can plan on sending um, that next invite for you. OK, so right now we're on June, June 15th at um, 5.15 or 5.30 again. 5.30, yeah. yeah. It works. Sorry. That's good. If we're unable to attend and we have another person in like at the family place, could they attend that meeting in place of a person? Just so we yep. OK. Thanks. Yep, you would just want to take a minute and try and um, level set them or um, share the um, recording with them yeah from yeah. this so if you so could get they... the recording that would be good yeah thank you nicole yes yeah so if you could just level set anyone that needs to um attend and if you could let leslie know in advance if somebody else will be attending so we can just remember that there's going to be a new face um maybe ask them to introduce themselves i'm on the spot <laughs> that was not my intention. <laughs> Just <kidding. laughs>
Okay. Are there any other housekeeping things I'm asking the CDD team that I'm missing? Just I think that um, after tomorrow's group, we'll be getting the website updated and putting as soon as this recording is ready, we'll get that up. Um, we'll get some documents up for you about what was talked about today. Um, and um, the meeting notes will go up. Um, uh, let me think the link for the uh, pre work questions are still there and then we'll also put up another forms link that will ask from for feedback from this meeting. So anything that you have to say that you can think about take back to your teams. Um, and anything you want to um, give us feedback about from this meeting. Um, we will have that up for you to do that. Um, 